I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry it took me so long to make this video. It took the months of research that I've done, including things that have changed since I've done my research and cramming that into a neat little video for your beautiful face. So lay off. All right, let's compare ATP and Blue Line. <laughs> Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, I'm going to explain how this video is structured. If you just really don't care about how I got this information or how this video is structured, make sure to use the timestamps in the description or you can use the video tabs right here and just skip to the part that you're interested in. Totally won't be offended that you're skipping on the beginning. I won't be. Okay, the video structure. While I was on my own a little adventure trying to figure out what flight school I wanted to go to, there were certain things that I was looking for. And those things I've turned into categories, which is displayed in the video tabs at the bottom of this video. And some of those categories will have subcategories. The way I go over each category is I'll tell you what the category is, I'll go over its subcategories, and then break down each subcategory with what you should be looking for or asking about. After that, I'll follow up by going over how ATP and Blue Line stand on each subcategory. And once I've talked to you about the entire category, I'll go over what I think, and then this winner breakdown will appear, showing you what and how many categories each school has won. If the schools tie on a category, they're just going to be both marked as winning that category. There are two things I'm judging each category with. That's the straight facts and my opinion will be involved as well. Keep that in mind because my choosing may not align with your perspective on that category. What I'm trying to do in this video though is give you all the information that you would need to be able to make a decision on your own. So be your own adult and make your own decisions. At the end of the entire video, you'll see who wins the comparison and I'll let you know what school I ended up choosing and why. I highly recommend before watching this video to look in the description just in case I put any notes or updates in there because if I got something wrong or there's something I needed to update, I'm gonna put those notes in the description. Once I upload this video, I don't really have a way of revising it. So just in case, look at the description, just look at it really quick, it's right there, just do it really quick. Cool, good job. So where did I get all this information? Well, I started with 20 flight schools and it wasn't just coincidental that it fell into 20, it was just there were 20 flight schools that I just was interested in. And over time, I narrowed that down to two flight schools, which is ATP and Blue Line. So ATP's Tampa location and Blue Line and Raleigh were the only two schools I visited. And that's because the other schools simply just didn't provide something that I was looking for. So I just didn't waste my time visiting those schools. At each school before, during, and after my visit, I was talking with students and alumni and instructors and staff employees. And I talked with them online or in person. And I was looking for their opinion about their experience at each flight school. I also talked about a lot of pilots who were active in their career or they're retired, people that were in 20, 30 plus years. I even talked with a pilot who works for American and was a part of the hiring process. And they all essentially said the same thing. They, they simply said that the school that you're coming from isn't gonna have that much of an impact on whether or not you're gonna get hired to whatever aviation career you're shooting for, but more so the, the character you portray and, and if you seem driven as a pilot, and, and obviously if you have your minimums, <laughs> kind of important. They all mentioned that there was never really a direct correlation between the school that a pilot came from and whether or not they were a quality pilot, hence why it doesn't have that much of an impact on you being hired or not. With that being said, let's finally get this comparison started. Ready? Let's do this. For the first category, safety. For safety, I have this split into two subcategories. We have safety emphasis and accident history. For safety emphasis, we're looking to see how much emphasis do the schools put on safety. This is pretty self-explanatory, and we're looking for how much safety is a part of the school's culture. How much are they talking about it? How much are they implementing it? Etc. Etc. Now for ATP and Blue Line, both schools really have a huge emphasis on safety. They constantly talk about it, and you constantly see them act on it. For the other subcategory, it's accident history. Does a school have a history of aircraft accidents or incidents? Essentially what you wanna do here is ask the flight school about their accident history, do a little bit of your own digging, and just do some basic Google search for anything. Where do ATP and Blue Line stand for accident history? So ATP has had accidents, but considering the ratio of how long they've been around, how many pilots they train at all their locations, the accidents, although tragic, I felt it clearly showed the high probability of how safe they are as a school. For Blue Line, I just couldn't find anything. I think you'll find safety to be the number one priority for most flight schools. Not all of them, but most of them. I would assume safety is not only a priority for these flight schools just for the moral sake of it, but as well because the FAA breathes down the necks of these flight schools. And when an accident or an incident occurs, it all becomes public information. So these flight schools have a reputation to uphold. For both ATP and Blue Line, they both really emphasize on safety. They, they really push safety. So for this category, both ATP and Blue Line are gonna win this one. Education quality. 
This category is split into four subcategories, school structure, classroom quality, instructor DPE availability, and ground school. All right, for the subcategory of school structure, what you're looking for here is whether or not the school is a part 61 or part 141 school. To oversimplify this, part 61 schools have less requirements, allowing the instructors to be more flexible on their training program. Whereas part 141 schools, the whole flight school has requirements, the, the syllabus, the curriculum, and everything. And so what this does is to provide you an idea of what the class structure will be like, as well as what the flight minimums will be based off of the FAA's requirements. This category is debatable on its importance, because in the end, what really matters is what school will effectively and efficiently make you a good pilot, and a school being either part 61 or 141 doesn't necessarily guarantee the outcome of a quality pilot. You do supposedly get lower insurance if you go to a 141 school, so that's a thing. Now where does each school stand? Well, ATP is a Part 61 school, and although there's no required curriculum structure by the FAA for Part 61 schools, ATP is known for creating a very effective and efficient structure for their schooling, especially compared to other Part 61 schools. Now Blue Line is a mixture of Part 141 and 61, mostly Part 141, but they have Part 61 programs. So because they're Part 141, they have to follow very strict standards that the FAA puts on them, so their syllabus and their class structure is already pretty much specified by the FAA. Alright, so next thing is classroom quality. Are the classrooms modern? Are they clean? Are they well equipped? The environment you learn in will have a huge impact on how efficient you'll be when you're studying. Are the schools using the most effective means of providing you information? Will you be distracted by your chair falling apart or if the room smells like a gym? For this, both flight schools have pretty clean and modern classrooms, but Blue Lines were more well kept and felt much newer. Another side note is that Blue Lines can be moving into a whole new state-of-the-art hangar facility at Johnson County Regional Airport, and that happens at the end of 2020. Their facilities will be even newer compared to what they are now. They're even supposedly gonna have a restaurant at the top of the facility, because why not? Next up category is instructor and DPE availability. So there's two questions here that we wanna ask. One, how accessible are instructors outside of flying? It can be a huge help to have instructors available when you study before, during, or after ground school sessions. The second question is, do they have DPEs on site or do they just contract them outside of the school? A DPE is known as a designated pilot examiner and they're the ones that pass or fail you during check rides. The lack of DPE availability can put a hindrance on how long it takes you to finish school. You're gonna prefer a DPE to be on site so they're available sooner than later. All right, for ATP, let's talk about their instructors first. A lot of your time at ATP, as well as for Blue Line, is self-study, but it is recommended that you study at the school so you can engage with an instructor if needed. I'm assuming one is always available at ATP, but I couldn't really get that confirmation. For DPE availability, at their Tampa location, they had a DPE available there in-house. So that's convenient instead of having to wait to fit into the schedule of another DPE that is contracted, thus delaying your schooling. For Blue Line, Blue Line always has instructors at their training facility, and they also recommend that you study there at their location to engage with them as well. Blue Line has DPEs available in-house as well. The CEO is actually one of them. So the next category is ground school, and we have two questions here. The first one is, does the school provide a ground school? A good flight school will have a recommended online ground school, as well as physical ground school classes. The other question is, assuming they do have a ground school, how do they provide it? Whether it's online, is it physical classes, or both? If they provide online, what online school did they provide? Is it a quality online ground school? And you can figure that out just by a brief Google search. For their physical ground school classes, if they provide those, who's teaching them? Is it instructors? Is it management staff? You'll obviously want someone who's experienced in aviation teaching the classes. And another thing is how frequent are those physical classes? So both schools had differences and similarities. Both schools utilize King's Online Ground School, which is pretty well known for being a pretty effective ground school program. They have a really high pass rate for all their written tests. Both schools also utilize flight instructors and management as ground school instructors. Where the differences lie is ATP has physical classes held on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. At least they did at the Tampa location. For Blue Line, physical classes are scheduled specifically to you as the student, and they're usually three days a week. You're also welcome to voluntarily attend other ground school classes that may be going on at the school as long as it doesn't interfere with your current schedule. So who wins education quality? I would lean towards Blue Line for this instance, but it's not a clear winning, and let me explain why. I chose Blue Line because, and, and I'll talk about this actually in the next category, but their instructors are vetted prior to hiring, which just my opinion here, but I feel like that would have quite a huge impact on the quality of the instruction. 
As well, Blue Line's holding classes all the time, and you have the ability to sit in on any of those ground school classes that you want to, as long as it doesn't interfere with your schedule. So you have access to a little bit more education than you normally would. Now, why it's not a clear winning is because ATP has been doing this for 30 plus years. They clearly have set up some kind of system that has allowed them to put out, you know, decent to quality pilots. Because if they weren't putting out at least decent pilots, ATP would be not doing so well business-wise. So keep that in mind. Either way, though, I, I'm gonna have to give this to Blue Line. Opinion, just letting you know that I'm giving it to Blue Line. All right, next category. Now we're looking at staff quality. This category has two subcategories, the quality of the faculty and the quality of the instructors. For faculty quality, what we're looking for is, is whether or not the faculty is welcoming. Do they seem patient and competent when you ask them questions? More importantly, do they seem happy? You'll be working really closely with faculty, so you want to make sure you're going to enjoy your time around them, and you're really going to want to make sure you're getting the correct information the first time you receive it. Now, the reason why I put emphasis on their happiness is that's insight on how the culture is for the school, kind of giving you a peep into whether or not your experience at that flight school will be enjoyable, or at least negatively hindered by the staff itself. Okay, so where does ATP stand on this? Well, ATP was insanely big on communication and really engaging. As an example, there was something that was miscommunicated to me about their tuition reimbursement from one of their finance guys, which I'll talk about later. So I posted on their forum about it to get more clarity. Not even an hour later, a woman by the name of Ashley, she seems to specialize in career connections as well as the tuition reimbursement, reached out to clarify everything over the phone. That was pretty impressive. Now, this thing I'm gonna talk about, it was just one occurrence at one location, but I figured I would let you know. I had scheduled my tour with ATP about a week prior and they put me in their system for it. When I walked into ATP's facility, there were three or four people in the lobby and none of them engaged with me. It was kind of weird. I walked up to the front desk and when I told them I was there for a scheduled tour, it seemed that I was in the system, but they didn't have an instructor to give me a tour. They had to go find an instructor that may be available to give me that tour. Luckily they found one and it was actually a really good instructor, but I really want to point out that this may just have been a clerical error on the corporate side, so it's kind of hard to hold such a small thing against them and it was pretty smooth sailing after that anyways. For Blue Line, that had such a blast of Blue Line's faculty. They were really fun and energetic. They made me feel really welcome. They're all really receptive and informative for all the questions I had for them. And believe me, I had a list of questions. Now, two incidents occur, one while I was there visiting the school and the other after I had left, and they both left me really impressed. First, while I was there, their CEO, which is the chief operating officer, his name is Lance. He was a former uh, Coast Guard pilot, wanted to make sure that he got the chance to see me, so he fit me into this 15 minute window right before a meeting he had to go to. He was really nice and expressed his support for Blue Line's career pilot program and really wanted to make sure I understood that I could talk to him at any point that I wanted to. Later on, Blue Line CEO Trey Walters reached out to me and wanted to make sure I knew I could reach out to him at any time as well. That's pretty impressive that the two highest positions of a company have made themselves available to the student for me to ask any questions that I may have. All right, so the next subcategory, which is instructor quality. We're looking for the same attributes as faculty members. Are they patient? Are they well-informed? Are they happy? Now, unfortunately, this is really hard to judge without having flying experience with each instructor, but you can use your best judgment of character by having one-on-one -on -one conversations in person with the instructors. Both schools are pretty similar here. Both instructors I engaged with at the schools were very transparent and patient with me and answered any questions I had. The only instructor I flew with was Alex from Blue Line, and that is because I was flying to Raleigh from Orlando to visit them, and I wanted to knock out everything I could while I was up there, get the full experience essentially, because at the time I was living in Orlando. Now Alex was a great instructor and made my first flight really easy going and informative. Talking with the students from both of the schools, they were all pretty happy with the instructors that they had, so no problems that I found there. I'll have to give this to Blue Line, and it's because of two different reasons. One is just my personal experience with Blue Line staff, and the other is because of how instructors are vetted at Blue Line. The staff was just more friendly and receptive of me being at their location. It was like they're really inviting, they want you to be a part of like a family, like it, it genuinely feels like they really want you to be part of a family. For the instructor quality, they're not just hiring someone because they established their FAA minimums and got the ratings. They're hiring people that are meeting the standard of being a quality pilot slash quality instructor. I'm just more comfortable with the idea that Blue Line chooses their instructors not based off of them meeting their FAA minimums, but rather that they're meeting a certain standard that Blue Line wants in place for their instruction. So you're not just a pilot with your ratings, you're a pilot with your ratings that can also have the ability to instruct people and maintain a quality culture within the flight school. And just to emphasize here, after talking with some pilots that have been in the industry for a while, you can totally get all of your ratings and still be not that great of a pilot. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's a thing. Now, at ETP, from what I'm understanding, they guarantee the instructor position to the graduates. But if you continually show that you're a poor instructor and people just generally don't like being under you, they'll supposedly be very quick to fire you. In the end though, it does seem to work for ATP, but I prefer that the instructors were vetted and weeded out prior to the student being exposed by substandard instruction. Because of that, this one goes to blue line. All right, next major category, fleet quality. This category is split into four subcategories. Age of aircraft, how modern their avionics are, the overall quality, and their simulators. For age of aircraft, it's pretty straightforward. How old are their aircraft? The age of the aircraft can give you a sense of confidence that it hasn't been through too long of a rough past, and that it's probably not falling apart, which is important for the confidence of flight. For ATP and Blue Line, they both use newer aircraft. ATP uses Cessna CE-172s, Piper Archers, and their multi-engine is the Piper PA-44 Seminoles. ATP has new aircraft. I think the oldest aircraft that Tampa had at that time was a 2016 or 2017. But when you see them, they just don't, this is totally personal opinion, they just don't feel like they're new. They just seem like older technology, I guess you could put it. Whereas Blue Line uses brand new and higher in general aviation aircraft from Diamond. Now Blue Line has a couple Cessna 172s uh, with full glass cockpits and mostly use Diamond DA-20s, DA-40s, and their multi-engine aircraft are a couple DA-42s. Diamond aircraft seem very modern. Uh, they're very up to date, nice plush leather seats. Some of those aircraft have air conditioning and the Bubble canopies for the great visibility is insanely awesome. For the next category, how modern are their avionics? Essentially glass versus steam cockpit. I have found that it is a heavy debate about which is better to learn in and to avoid the whole debacle not going to explaining each. I have a link to a great article of AOPA's website explaining what they are and the pros and cons of each. So in the end to summarize, what do you prefer? Well, if you can find a flight school that has a fleet that has both steam and glass, you'll be well versed in both types of cockpits. For me, I definitely lean towards glass cockpits, but personal opinion. And both ATP and Blue Line both have a mixture of glass cockpits and steam gauges. Okay, so the next subcategory is overall quality. This subcategory is definitely opinionated, so it'll be up to you on this one, but what is the overall quality of the aircraft? I prefer to fly an aircraft that's manufactured by a company that has a reputation for reliability, but also you want things like air conditioning, interior comfort, plus flying is meant to be enjoyable. So whether or not you want to throw in how cool the aircraft looks is entirely up to you. For ATP and Blue Line, both schools have quality aircraft. It's just that Blue Line uses diamond aircraft. They look and feel like higher end aircraft. Plus they have this beautiful unobstructed 180 degree view. Oh, and some of them have air conditioning, if not all of them. For the next subcategory, let's talk about simulators. One, does the flight school even have simulators? It's not all flight schools have these, and a quality flight school should have access to simulators, preferably in-house, to mitigate scheduling issues. And the second thing is, are the simulators of a quality type? Do they give a sense of realism, such as full avionics setup, hydraulic movement, wraparound screens? Are they using Redbird simulators or plane-specific simulators? You'll most likely be doing a lot of simulator time while you're in flight school, so consider what you'll be spending that time in. For ATP, they utilize three different kinds of simulators in their career pilot program at all their different locations. They use, this can be really fun to say, Precision Flight Controls AATDs, they also use the Frasca Piper Seminole True Flight FTD, and they also use the Redbird Simulator. Most ATP locations have multiple simulators, and they're predominantly the AATD simulator. For Blue Line, they have one simulator, and it's a Redbird Simulator. I had a really hard time trying to make this as fair of a decision as possible about who would win this category. Because overall, both schools have quality aircraft and quality simulators. But after talking with pilots in the industry, and I'm throwing my own opinion here as well, I would have to give it to Blue Line because Diamond aircraft are just higher end aircraft. They're commonly compared to Cirrus aircraft. Plus, some of their fleet, if not all of their fleet, have air conditioning. And that 180 degree unobstructed view is to die for, it is, it is crazy. But before I move on though, I really have to emphasize, ATP has a really close second here. It just comes down to that if, if a pilot had a choice to choose between a Diamond and a Piper or a Cessna, they're gonna most likely choose the Diamond. So Blue Line's the winner for this one. All right, let's talk about fleet availability. This category is split into two subcategories, the size of the fleet, this includes aircraft and simulators, and whether or not the school has in-house maintenance. So for fleet size, how many aircraft and simulators does that school have? It's important for a school to have a large fleet to accommodate all their students, and also to make up for any aircraft or simulators that may be down due to maintenance to not interfere with their scheduling. For ATP, they have a national fleet, so if for whatever reason a bunch of the aircraft are grounded due to maintenance, they can pull from another location. For ATP's Tampa location, they had 5 Piper Seminoles and 12 Piper Archers. 
To give you an idea of availability of those simulators at the location, for at least Tampa's location, they had one FTD simulator and three AATD simulators. But as I've looked into ATP's multiple different locations, almost all of their locations have multiple simulators to use from. Blue Line also has a large fleet, 11 Diamonds and two Cessnas. And actually, I think that might be 12 Diamonds now because I'm pretty sure they just picked up another DA-42 multi-engine aircraft. As for the simulators, they only have one simulator, which is the Redbird simulator. The other thing we need to consider is in-house maintenance. Does the school have in-house maintenance? A good flight school will have their own maintenance team, and this is important because aircraft can be fixed as soon as possible instead of waiting for an aircraft to fit into the schedule of some outside contracted maintainer, who's not only maintaining for the school, but for other people or other schools as well. There's not much of a comparison here though because both schools, ATP and Blue Line, have in-house maintenance, so nothing there. So ATP is gonna be the winner here by technicality, and that is because they have multiple schools to pull aircraft from, and as well, most of their locations have multiple simulators to use. So there's a side note I need to include here, and there's a reason why I said ATP wins by the technicality, and that's because this category, you have to consider whether or not the students are graduating on time according to the school's advertised timeline about when you're supposed to graduate their program. I talk about this more in the program length category later in this video, but if the students are graduating on time, they most likely have a solid setup for their scheduling around their aircraft and their simulators, no matter how large their fleet is or how many students they're having to deal with. Alright, for the next category, let's talk about the instructor position. This category is about the instructor position that these schools have, and it's split into two subcategories whether or not the position's guaranteed, and also the instructor's quality of life. So let's talk about whether or not they guarantee positions. Are the instructor positions at these schools guaranteed upon graduating from that school? This can provide some relief if they do guarantee that position. After paying so much for flight school to instantly be entered into an instructor position to not only begin your aviation career with a stable paying job, but also to rack up flight hours as soon as possible, especially for those interested in receiving their ATP license to move on to airline world. For ATP, they guarantee the instructor position after graduation. I'm sure there is some level of vetting, so if you were a horrible person the whole way through but managed to graduate, they'd probably find a way to not give you the position. That being said, most students are able to take the instructor position. For Blue Line, Blue Line doesn't guarantee you an instructor position. But at first, this was the biggest thing that was preventing me from going to Blue Line. I ended up changing my mind though after talking with their staff. And the reason they don't guarantee you the position is because you can obtain all of your ratings, you could still end up being a substandard pilot, or instructing may not even be suited for you, and it could be clearly visible. Blue Line vets all their graduates before considering them in an instructor position. And this is to make sure you're going to uphold their standards for quality instruction. From the way it was conveyed to me though, it seems that you'd have to be a pretty bad student for you to not get the position. Alright, so the other thing we want to consider when it comes to the instructor position is the instructor's quality of life. So what is the quality of life for instructors at these schools? So picture this, right? You get the instructor position, but are you gonna hate life? Will it be low pay or low flight hours? How is the instructor culture within the flight school itself? These questions matter to make sure you won't enter the aviation industry with financial stresses and a, and a bad taste in your mouth. There's no point in getting a guaranteed instructor position if you could have just ended up going elsewhere and getting paid more. All right, for ATP, as of February of 2020, there's a guaranteed amount of $1,150 per month that ATP will pay you, and then you're paid on the amount of time that you fly, as you can see here. I asked about how many hours instructors average with flight times per month, and they said around 80 to 100 hours. Talking with some students, they say the time can fluctuate and be under that sometimes. Heads up, for ATP, the location that you'll be instructing at isn't guaranteed. So for example, let's say you graduated in Tampa, you may have to instruct in another state at one of their other schools, but I believe they attempt to do everything they can to keep you at the school that you graduate from. So where does Blue Line stand? Well, their instructors are paid salary. I believe it's around 40,000 a year according to the staff, and there's no chasing flight hours for pay. Blue Line staff state that you'll get 80 to 100 hours of flight per month, and according to one of the instructors, this is actually what they get, weather permitting, of course. If you get the instructor position, there is no having to relocate, well, at least until they move to Johnson Regional Airport where they're building their new facility, but that's only an hour away. So, who wins the instructor position category? It's kind of hard because ATP guarantees the instructor position, which is great for job security. But once you graduate, you may be relocated to another location that ATP has for you to instruct there. And as well, you're chasing the hours to be able to get paid well enough. Blue Line, on the other hand, doesn't guarantee the position. But there's a high probability of you getting the position, as long as you're literally a quality person. Because once again, they vet based off of whether or not you'd be a good instructor. And the quality of life with steady pay would be great. As well, there's no risk of relocation because, well, except when Blue Line moves to Johnson Regional County Airport, but that's, that's an hour away. But they only have one location. So because of that, you don't get relocated as an instructor. 
Now the big thing here is feedback coming from the instructors directly. The instructors I talked to at Blue Line absolutely were happy with what they have. When I talked with instructors, and this this is also including people's feedback that I've seen from ATP's forum and, and, and Facebook groups and that whole deal, there's just this constant talk about how ATP is one of the lowest paying schools when it comes to instructor pay. Now. That's hearsay, but in the end, I mean, it's from when I was talking to instructors myself, they were saying that that was borderline true. In the end, if I were to be placed into an instructor position, I, I would want to enjoy it and I'd want to get paid well enough. So I'm gonna have to give this one to Blue Line. The quality of life would just be so much better. All right, let's talk career guidance for the next category. This category is about what the school's involvement is like with landing a job in the aviation industry after you graduate, or for most people, getting placed into the airline industry after you've received enough hours for your ATP rating. This category is split into two subcategories, job preparation and industry connections. For job preparation, how involved are the schools with preparing you for landing a career in the aviation industry? We're looking for programs at the school to prepare you for job interviews, job practices and etiquette, etc. Do they have airline partners that come in for mock interviews or to come in and start an early relationship? Anything to effectively and efficiently expedite your placement into the career of your choice. Now both ATP and Blue Line are heavily involved with preparations for interviews and airline practices. Both schools bring in representatives from actual airline companies to provide meet and greets, mock interviews, etc. Now the next Next subcategory is industry connections. How well connected is the flight school to the aviation industry, more specifically towards the airline industry, blowing their students into a position as soon as all the necessary ratings have been achieved? ATP is renowned for its heavy connections in the industry by partnering with multiple airliners, some of those airliners providing tuition reimbursement programs, which I'll talk about later when I explain the winner of this category. Now for Blue Line, Blue Line has a really close connection with Republic Airlines and Mountain Air Cargo, which is a cargo carrier for FedEx. And when I was last there, their career guidance counselor had two more major airline companies that were lined up to establish a partnership with. So, who wins career guidance? This is another difficult category, because at first it would seem that ATP's advertisement of how connected they are to the regional airlines would make this a convincing winner comparing it to Blue Line. But as you break it down, you realize that both schools are heavily connected in being able to land you a job at any regional airline or corporate position you're shooting for. So what it really comes down to is personal preference, and let me explain. Blue Line and ATP both have departments that are specific to being able to land you a job in the aviation industry. They prep you for the job, mock interviews, the whole deal. So you really have no worry about either flight school's ability to be able to land you a job wherever you intend to find yourself a career in the aviation industry. Well, I'm going to have to say that the advantage leans towards ATP is because of their tuition reimbursement program. So what is tuition reimbursement? Let me explain this because I was so confused when I first heard this. And what, when I explain it, it's going to seem simple, but I guess when I was researching it, I don't know. I guess I went stupid on myself. Essentially, if you intend to fly for the airlines, you have to start in the airline industry with the regional airliners. And most, if not all, of those regional airlines provide a sign-on bonus. Well, ATP has established a connection with some of these regional airlines that provide you early access to that sign-on bonus, mostly to lower the burden of loan payments while you're an instructor in school. You're getting a portion of your sign-on bonus paid to you while you're in school in portions to be able to help you make your loan payments. So what are you giving in return for this tuition reimbursement? Well, you're essentially signing a contract, committing yourself early on into your schooling to that regional airline, which I won't get into here, but that's a whole debate whether or not that's worth it because both sides argue that this is this is perfect, right? Because then you get to you get to lessen the burden of your loan payments. But some argue that you really don't want to choose your airliner so early into school because the airline industry is so volatile, it changes all the time about who's going to be the best airliner to go to. Like I said, personal preference. So who wins? Well, both schools are superb when it comes to job placement in the aviation industry. But ATP's tuition reimbursement program is an additional option that may be really beneficial for some students. So the winner here is ATP. I want to talk to you about this right now because because we just briefly spoke about the regional airlines. I talked with a pilot who was once a part of the hiring process for American, and his word of advice was don't get caught up in the idea of a flow program. Make sure you're fully understanding what you're doing. It's not that they're bad, it's but it's also that they're not as good as they can seem as well. So a flow program is essentially where you join a regional, as an example I'll say Envoy, and after a set amount of years flying for Envoy, you are guaranteed a position, sometimes without having to do any additional interviews, to Envoy's direct major airline, which is American 
American Airlines. Where the problem lies is, and this is when I was doing my research and talking to different people who have been a part of the program, they were told, you know, a different set amount of years, how long it would take for them to be at the regionals to get to the major airline. And as an example, some people were told that it would take five to six years, but it ended up taking seven to eight years. And at the same time, they were watching other pilots who chose not to be a part of the flow program and who graduated after they did. And they went directly to the major airline, submitted their application and got the position before the guy that was a part of the flow program. Now, this isn't always the case, but what I do know is it happens enough where it's commonly spoken about. Approach it with an open mind, because once again, it's not, it's not necessarily bad, but it's also not necessarily good. So just keep that in mind. Let's continue. All right, the next category we're gonna talk about is program length. This category is pretty straightforward. We're looking for how long the program is and are the students graduating on time. So firstly, how long is their advertised program length? There's a balance you need to look for when it comes to how fast you'll graduate from a flight school. You'll want to finish as soon as you can, but you don't want to sacrifice a quality education to set a good foundation as a pilot. Side note here, as you do your own research, you'll realize that Part 141 schools are slightly faster than Part 61 schools due to the fact that 141 schools have FAA-approved curriculum, Thus, the FAA lowers the minimums for each rating. It's a very small difference though, and nine times out of 10, people don't usually meet their minimums before they're actually ready to receive their ratings. So where does each school stand? ATPs advertising nine months long and Blue Lines advertising five and a half months long. But the big question is, are they graduating on time? Now the flight school have an advertised period of time like I just mentioned, ATP being nine months and Blue Lines five and a half months. For ATP, most of the students I talked with were not graduating within that nine months. They're actually graduating with in 10 to 11 months, and what I kept hearing is that it's because of ATP CFI school, which is the school you get sent to to get your instructor rating. And this is where they were delayed about a month or so. One of the students I talked with was about a month ahead of the program, but he wasn't able to attend CFI school for one and a half months after he was already ready to go, putting about a half a month behind his normal schedule. Another thing to note is that some other students were talking about actually graduating in time and that it matters about what CFI school you ended up getting sent to. Now, I don't believe you get to choose that unless maybe it's direct correlated with the school location you choose and then from there ATP has specified CFI schools throughout the nation that they'll send each location to. I hope that made sense. Either way there is a delay that's being talked about. For Blue Line after talking with students there and what they are seeing as well as students who have graduated from Blue Line they've all graduated on time. For Blue Line their CFI school isn't at another location and it's not a separate entity for scheduling it so it gets scheduled into the normal program without any slowdowns or roadblocks. I was worried at first about the length of the schooling being so short because we're talking about five and a half months compared to ATP's nine months but it wasn't too long ago that ATP's program was the same length. Now pure assumptions here but I believe ATP might be longer because they're receiving more and more pilots with their massive marketing and to make up for the high traffic they extend the program to maintain the quality of the training and prevent backup although it seems they're still experiencing backup from their CFI school. Side note one of the things I was curious about was how it was even possible for Blue Line to have 14 instructors how would it have been possible for their instructors to rack up 80 to 100 hours because the math just didn't seem to add up. But after speaking with their staff, their instructors don't just instruct their career pilot program students, but they also instruct others who are working on a single rating at a time and whatnot, which if I recall, their clients that are coming in to work on just a single rating make up 75% of their instructor flight hours. After you look at it from that point of view, you totally understand how they're able to rack up their hours. The overwhelmingness that is experienced in these fast track programs for flight schools seem to be the same no matter how long each program is. And students from either school school were happy with the foundation that each school provided them to become a pilot. That being the case, considering that the education quality doesn't really diminish with either flight school due to the length of their program, I'm going to have to give this one to Blue Line, especially considering the constant talk about delays from CFI schools. Being able to graduate four to five months sooner, that's, that's a big deal. Alright, the next category is location. This category is about where the flight school is actually physically located, and I've separated it into three different subcategories. Weather, airspace busyness, and cost of living. As a heads up as I go into this topic, Blue Line is moving to a new facility that they're building at Johnson County Regional Airport. The airport code is JNX. So I'll go over Blue Line's current and future location when going through these comparisons. Uh, this move, by the way, is supposed to happen at the end of 2020. For the first subcategory, we're gonna talk about weather. And what we're looking for here is what is the weather like year round, especially during the time that you'll be in school. Weather matters because of two different factors the type of weather that you're going to learn to fly in, and flight cancellations due to weather. This topic splits people into two different crowds. 
The first crowd is in favor of flight schools that are located in areas with good weather year-round, think Florida, because flight cancellations are much more rare. The other crowd says that the flight schools that experience all four seasons are better because you get to learn how to fly in all conditions, making you a more well-rounded pilot. Now, just because a school has bad weather doesn't mean they experience cancellations all the time. Once again, look to see if students are graduating on time. You'd be surprised how infrequent cancellations actually are in certain areas. Now, obviously, don't go flying in upstate New York or Alaska, but you get into southern Utah, Oklahoma, North Carolina, and you'll be just fine. For ATP, they have locations all around the nation, going as north as Washington and as south as Florida. This gives you the option to choose which environment you may want to fly in. For Blue Line, being in the middle of North Carolina, they experience all four seasons. Their new location is only an hour away from Raleigh, so no difference in weather there. The next subcategory is airspace busyness. What we're looking for here is what class airspace is that airport, and what that means is how busy is that airspace supposed to be. Just like the weather, there are two crowds of people when it comes to airspace busyness. There are those who are in favor of busy airspaces because you gain more experience talking to ATC and operating in higher class airspaces, think class C and class B airspaces. Others believe the busyness adversely affects your training time as you have an allotted time of flying with some flight schools. Your allotted time typically starts the second you start the aircraft, meaning if you are at a really busy airport and taxing takes a while, you're losing time on the ground. Now after really looking at it, the amount of time lost taxing at busy airport is supposedly negligible, but just in case, talk to your flight school about it and if it's not a problem, why not learn how to fly where the big dogs do, which is in busier airspace. Alright, for ATP, they have flight schools at all types of airspaces, depending on which location you choose. And for Blue Line, currently they're at RDU, Raleigh-Durham International Airport, which is a Class C airspace, but their new location at JNX will be Class E airspace. Raleigh has been known for being a busy airspace. People have actually talked about how Raleigh should not be a Class C, but should be a Class B airspace, meaning it's busier than it's actually portrayed. The other subcategory is cost of living. What does it cost to live where the school is located. You're going to really want to consider this category at your flight school's location if you don't intend to stay in student housing and you intend to just get your own place. For ATP, once again, it, ATP has multiple locations, so it'll vary depending on what location you choose. For Blue Line, as they're currently in Raleigh, they have a decent cost of living, for especially for the size of Raleigh. But once they move to Johnson County, it'll be a bit cheaper as it's not in a big city. It's kind of hard not making a decision on this category without my opinion being involved with that decision. See, I fall into the crowd that believes the benefits of flying in a busier airspace and in multiple different kind of conditions of weather outweighs the potential risk of cancellation, including the fact that in this situation for like Blue Line, that you know, you're still graduating on time and even with cancellations, you're still not meeting how long ATP's program is. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think you should be choosing a flight school that's in like Washington or New York or any of those northern states that experience really bad winter. That clearly isn't worth it, but a location like North Carolina is is genuinely the happy medium. You experience all four seasons. But on the other side, I've talked to students, not necessarily for ATP, but that reside in Florida, that went to flight school in Florida, and they said they got a lot of experience with flying around thunderstorms and this constant intermittent rain that is Florida. Now granted, North Carolina doesn't experience the same frequency of thunderstorms and rainstorms that Florida does, but they do experience them nonetheless. North Carolina is generally the happy medium to experience all kinds of weather, from thunderstorms storms to icing conditions to blazing hot summers, it's all there. Now one of my initial concerns was cancellations. What what goes on during the winter for flight schools that are either, you know, a part of the Bible Belt and, and higher, right? I talked with a student who actually went to ATP in Raleigh. It's literally the same location as Blue Line. They're both at RDU. And he said that cancellations were few and far between. Definitely not frequent enough to cause problems with graduating on time. That being said, this decision carries my opinion involved with it. So keep that in mind. As ATP and Blue Line both have schools that are in locations that experience all four seasons. And both schools will fall into busy airspace depending on what location you choose for ATP. But if you believe that good weather all year round and less busy airspace is preferable, then ATP would technically be your choice here because you get to choose your location. The next category is student housing. This is about the availability of student housing for each flight school, the cost, and the quality of the student housing. I can keep this category pretty brief as ATP and Blue Line are pretty similar here. First, student housing availability. Do they provide student housing? Sometimes a flight school will have a partnership with the local apartment complexes, providing contract-free living spaces and discounted rent. What they're doing here is they're actually renting the entire apartment out and then they're subletting it to their students. It's pretty normal for them to room two people per bedroom, by the way. So keep that in mind if you're interested in student housing. For both 
both ATP and Blue Line, they both provide student housing. No lease involved, as you're essentially subletting rooms at each flight school's leasing. You're not required to stay in student housing for either school. Both schools room two people per room, and they are typically two rooms per apartment. So what about student housing cost? What does it cost to actually live in these student housing, and are utilities included? Obviously, cost is a pretty huge factor into whether or not you'll live in student housing, or you'll just end up getting your own place. A lot of student housing typically includes utilities and internet. Another question you want to consider is, does anything change in cost if you decide to stay in student housing as an instructor? Some flight schools will provide even more discounts for their instructors to continually stay in student housing, so ask about that. Now, for ATP, they're $200 a week, or $800 a month for students and instructors. It used to be $800 a month for students and $300 for instructors, but that literally just changed in December of 2019. So keep that in mind in case you're hearing that information. For Blue Line, it's straight across the board, $500 a month for students, but instructors aren't permitted to stay in student housing. Just a heads up, let's say you become an instructor and you're looking around Raleigh and you want to have an idea of what you're going to be looking at for cost of living. We'll be pretty liberal here. Assuming you room with someone, you'd be looking at about $600 a month rent-wise and about approximately $150 for utilities. That which brings you about to an average about $750 a month for lodging. Keep in mind though, this will get cheaper when they move to Johnson County Regional. All right, let me break down what your cost will look like as a student and also as an instructor, assuming you become an instructor after graduating. Just a heads up, we'll get into comparing the entire cost of both schools in the next category. But I wanted to go ahead and show you this as this subject has its own version of a breakdown. So this is exactly how I broke it down because I really wanted to see the long-term rental cost both as a student and as an instructor. The table you see here is divided into those two categories of student and instructor. First, let's start with student. So the rental rate for Blue Line is $500 a month and ATP is $800 a month. For school duration, I put in each school's advertised program length, which is five and a half months for Blue Line and nine months for ATP. But just as a reminder that not all students are graduating in nine months at ATP, and that's because of that CFI delay that I mentioned earlier in the video. So those totals come out to Blue Line being $2,750 and ATP comes out to $7,200. So for student housing, Blue Line comes out cheaper. But what if you intend to also be an instructor for the school? Who comes out cheaper then? Well, let's go to the instructor section. For Blue Line, being that they don't allow instructors to stay in student housing, I use the average rental rate and utility cost if you roomed with someone else, which comes out to $600 for rent and $150 for utilities. ATP's rental rate is $800 per month, and utilities are included with that rent because it is student housing. So you'll graduate with both schools with approximately 250 flight hours. You need 1,500 to get your ATP rating. So if you average 70 hours of flight time per month, it'll approximately take 18 months to receive the remaining 1,250 hours to receive your ATP rating. Your total cost as an instructor for Blue Line would come out to $13,500, and ATP comes out to $14,400. When you combine both student and instructor cost, Blue Line comes out to $16,250, and ATP comes out to $21,600. So Blue Line ends up still being cheaper by about $5,350. Now adds a heads up, and you'll see this in the next category, I do not include instructor cost of living into the big cost breakdown between the two schools, only the cost of student housing as a student. The last subcategory of this category is apartment quality. What is the overall quality of the apartment that they provide you for student housing? You want to consider what amenities it has and how close it is to the flight school. Make sure you're checking the Google and Yelp reviews on it as well, and always, if possible, visit in person. But from my experience with ATP's Tampa location and Blue Line, the available apartment complex that each flight school uses are clean and modern apartments. So for this category, Blue Line and ATP were really similar in this aspect, so both schools are going to win this category. Side note here, and if you've seen my ATP or my Blue Line visit videos that I made, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I told you that there were plenty of stories about students that just simply did not enjoy their time in student housing. Once again, the apartment complexes are great, they're nice, they're modern, but the roommates were either dirty, noisy, inconsiderate, etc. For me, I chose not to do student housing for two reasons. The first is I have a family member that's local to the flight school, so I'm going to take advantage of lessening my rent as much as I possibly can. And second, because I really want to make sure I get good rest and really make sure that I'm getting interruption-free studying. That would be vital during a fast-track program in flight school. In my opinion, it's just not worth the savings that you get from the rent and utilities with the risk that you maybe getting a bad roommate. Now all the students that lived in student housing that had these stories did say that for them it was bearable because of how much they were saving based off a discount that they're getting from this student housing. Second side note is I found out that both flight schools will do everything they can to accommodate with whatever issues you run into in student housing. So keep that in mind that both schools are open to hear whatever problems you're dealing with and fixing them as soon as they can. They understand how vital it is that your home life needs to be needs to be in order. <laughs> 
We're finally on the final category and easily one of the most complex categories to go over when choosing a flight school. It's one of the first things that comes to our mind when choosing a flight school, and no matter what school you choose, it's gonna hurt how much you're spending to get your ratings. That being said, we really wanna make sure that every dime that we're spending at your flight school is worth it. So this category falls into several subcategories. We're gonna be talking about financial transparency, financing availability, payment distribution, the GI Bill, personal expenses, and then finally we will break down all the actual numbers for each school. For the first subcategory, let's talk about financial transparency. And what we're looking for here is how transparent is that flight school about all of their cost. It's an important factor that the flight schools be transparent all costs that will be associated with receiving all of your ratings. This includes additional costs on top of the program costs, such things as items and materials you'll need to purchase, cost of examiner fees and written tests, aircraft renters insurance, etc. For both ATP and Blue Line, both schools were very transparent in different ways, but it was clear that neither school was hiding anything. ATP reflects all their financial costs all over their website, and you can obviously call them as well. You just need to dig through and make sure you see every web page of ATP's website to make sure you don't miss any costs. You can always call ATP as well, and I'm pretty sure they can provide a comprehensive list of what you'd be looking at. For Blue Line, they don't have all this information except their main program costs on their website, but once you talk to them, they provide all the comprehensive of costs that you would need to consider. The other subcategory is financing availability. Does the school have any lender partnerships to help finance the entire cost of school? I'm gonna emphasize entire there. Now, if you're not big ballin' and don't intend to pay for your entire flight school with cash, then you will most likely be interested in what financing is available for each flight school, as well as what availability there is of financing additional costs outside of the program cost, such as pilot items and materials, living expenses, written test fees, etc. Keep in mind to ask the lender if they will finance the entire cost of the school. Some lenders do not cover the entire cost of the program. Both ATP and Blue Line have lenders that will fund the entire cost of school. For ATP, their lenders are Sally May and Wells Fargo, but lately they have been pushing more towards Sally May. ATP's lenders will also cover some additional costs, such as pilot items and materials, examiner fees, housing and living expense stipends, etc. For Blue Line, they're using two different lenders. They're using Meritize and Climb Credit. Climb Credit will not cover the entire cost of school, so you're going to be mostly interested in Meritize. Blue Line's lenders don't cover or any additional costs like ATPs, so you'd either need to have additional cash or consider getting a personal loan through your own bank to cover any additional expenses. The other subcategory is payment distribution. How are payments made to the school, whether you pay by cash or by financing? How your flight school is paid by the lender matters because if for whatever reason you're unable to complete schooling, you're going to want to make sure that you're able to get as much of your loan back as possible. It is highly recommended to avoid flight schools that request full payment up front, especially with no clause for a refund assuming you don't finish. There are stories of flight schools going out of business and just taking all the money with them. For ATP and Blue Line, both schools get paid in segments and will refund your money with any part of the program you didn't use. So let's say you quit after a couple flight hours and some ground lessons, you will only be refunded the amount remaining after the cost of those flight hours and those ground school lessons that you took and any other additional costs that you may have already used. Next subcategory is GI Bill, and this is obviously directed at my fellow veterans, but the question is, can the GI Bill be used in any way towards my schooling? There's a lot of misinformation out there about your GI Bill that it can't be used at all at flight schools, and that is just simply not true. Now, not all flight schools qualify, but typically, assuming what type of GI Bill you have and how much you have left of it, it can cover your check ride fees and your written test fees. This can save you anywhere between five dollars to $8,000. Thing you're going to keep in mind, though, is how that payment works. You typically have to pay for the check ride and test fees up front, and then you put a claim into the VA for reimbursement. Your flight school should have a specialist for for this, so if you have questions about it, just make sure you talk with them about it. I have heard that your GI Bill can be used at an accredited college that has an aviation program with the school, but now you're talking about finishing within three to four years and getting all your ratings. It's to each their own on this subject, but it's just not worth it for me. There's even a debate here that there's a loss of money because you're not able to get into the aviation industry sooner and making a pretty much a good salary sooner than later. For information about the GI Bill, I have two links in the description. One of the links allows you to check to see whether or not your school is even covered, and the other link is to check to see at the status and how much of your GI Bill you have left and what you'll be able to apply to this flight school. So where does ATP and Blue Line stand on this? Well, both schools can apply the GI Bill to examiner fees and written test fees, which as I get into later about cost breakdown, that saves you about around $6,000 for Blue Line and around $8,000 for ATP.
The next subcategory is personal expenses. And what we're looking for here is how much will you need per month to pay for your personal expenses while you're in school? This is more of an informational subcategory that I felt was important that I go over because this is such an odd category. Personal expenses include things like rent, car payment, insurance, phone bills, etc. It was surprising how many people I talked with who didn't consider the cost of personal expenses while in flight school. And this makes up approximately 20% of your entire cost for flight school. That's a huge amount to not consider, especially because you can't have a job at most flight schools that provide fast track programs for your ratings. And this is definitely true for ATP and Blue Line. What you need to do here is figure out what your monthly expenses are and multiply that by the length of the school's program. That's another thing to consider while choosing a flight school. The longer the school, the more your personal expenses will be, naturally. Keep in mind that if you move, the cost of living might be different than what you're used to as well. Now for comparing ATP and Blue Line, the only thing I can really compare between the two schools when it comes to personal expenses is two things, rent and length of school. Rent is variable for ATP as it depends on what location you choose, but the cost of living at Blue Line isn't that high in comparison to some other big cities. ATP is in smaller cities as well, so it's something to consider. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty. Now we're gonna break down the numbers. Here's the subcategory that I assume was the reason and for most of you to click on this video, and it's to truly break down and compare the cost of ATP versus Blue Line. Keep in mind that I am comparing these numbers based off of having zero flight experience. These numbers will change if you're coming with your private. For those that are going in with their private, keep in mind that you can't just have your private license and join ATP, as they require a minimum of 78 hours of flight as well as your private license. But if you're coming in with zero experience, you don't need to worry about any of that. For Blue Line, they don't have a flight hour minimum for anybody that already has the private license that are looking to enter the career pilot program. So you can just enter Blue Line with just your private. Another consideration if you're financing, almost all students refinance their loans prior to the deferment period ending. Essentially the period where they're not having to make any payments or they're making really, really low payments because the bank's letting them. This matters because I'm still gonna show you loan comparisons, but a lot of the numbers won't matter because it will all change for the better once you refinance your loan. Now, all these costs I'm gonna go over will change most likely as the years go on, but you can definitely use this as a good foundation of what to consider when it comes to your finances. All right, let's break this down. This cost breakdown will be split into two subjects. The first being simply the comparison of both schools total costs as a student, and the second subject will be other considerations such as class reservation fees, loan comparisons, etc. Let's first break down the cost as seen on this table here. These costs are the program cost and everything else you would need to pay for outside of those program costs. I can't tell you this enough. Be very aware of what your program cost will include. All right, first, the program cost. Blue Line's program is 75,000 and ATP's, not including their 100 plus multi-engine add-on, is $80,995. Now for a discovery flight, this is something that you have to do with both schools, which is essentially where you go up with one of the school's instructors to get a feel for being at the controls and making sure you don't end up spending thousands of dollars on something you may not have the desire to actually do. It is a completely different experience from being a passenger on an airline, by the way. Blue Line's discovery flight is $250 and ATP's is $195. As for ground school cost, most flight schools include ground school into their program cost, and there is no exception with Blue Line and ATP, so that'll be marked $0 for both schools. For medical certificates, both schools require you to get your first class. I saw they can cost upwards to $200, but mine was only $95. Cost of your medical certificate fluctuate based on which AME you end up going to. I have a link in the description on how to find an AME, which by the way is an aviation medical examiner. If you're in a bigger city, you'll have multiple options usually. Make sure to check their reviews and call all of them for their pricing. Now for written tests and examiner fees. Written tests are usually $150 per test whereas check ride fees will fluctuate depending on which examiner you hire. Either way, Blue Line's cost of written tests and check ride fees are approximately $6,000. Blue Line mentioned that this would be worst case scenario, whereas ATP's is $7,200. As for student housing cost, as we went over earlier in the student housing category, these are reflected as if you will graduate within the school's advertised graduation time. So Blue Line is five and a half months and their rent is $500, so that comes out to $2,750. And ATP is nine months long, assuming that you don't have any delays with the CFI school. And their rent is $800 a month for student housing, which brings your total to $7,200. Training materials is another cost you need to consider. This consists of things like books, charts, headsets, flight bags, etc. Each of these costs are reflecting what the school requires you to have, and the cost here do include shipping and, in this case, North Carolina taxes. ATP and Blue Line both require you to have different items. For example, Blue Line doesn't require you to have an iPad, for flight, or JEP charts, but it's highly recommended that you do get those. What I will do about this within this cost comparison is at the end, I will show you the cost difference including and not including the iPad, for flight, and JEP charts, just in case any of you just go with the required items for Blue Line to save money. That being said, 
Blue Line comes out to $583 and ATP comes out to $1,600. If you include an iPad, ForeFlight, and the Jefferson charts for Blue Line, training material costs will actually be around $1,400. Next cost to consider are loan origination fees. So some lenders who will finance the schooling for you have what they call a loan origination fee, which is an additional fee on top of the loan amount. This is a cost that only affects Blue Line in this category as Meritize has a loan origination fee, but for ATP, Sally Mae doesn't have this. Now, Meritize says it's about 3% of your loan total, which if that were the case for the $75,000 program, you'd be looking at about $2,250 fee. What is odd though, and I do wanna put this note in here, is when I applied, my loan origination fee was less than 3% and was more so around 1.5%, causing me to pay around $800 less than what you would expect. But just in case, if this was just some fluke situation, let's just assume 3%. Now for personal expenses, this is taking into consideration of things like food, cell phone bills, monthly subscriptions, etc. But this category doesn't include rent or utilities as student housing was calculated earlier. Being that everyone's personal expenses are different, I just took the average American's monthly personal expense and deducted rent and utilities to come out to around $1,500 a month. Now, Blue Line is five and a half months, so if you take five and a half months, multiply that by $1,500 per month, you come out to $8,250. ATP is nine months long, so it comes up to $13,500. Some flight schools require aircraft renter's insurance, and just to be clear, this is not the renter's insurance you may be used to for an apartment. This is to cover you in the situation that you experience an accident with one of the flight school's aircraft. Now, ATP doesn't require you to have renter's insurance, but Blue Line does. Blue Line's minimum for aircraft renter's insurance is $50,000 in hull damage. And after getting a quote from Avinco, you'd be looking at $580 annually. For either flight school, if you decide to become an instructor, you will not need this, as both ATP and Blue Line will cover you for this. So no need for renter's insurance as an instructor. Parking is a cost to consider depending on where your flight school is located. At Blue Line, they have two separate facilities. One facility that is at the Raleigh-Durham International Airport and the other that is off-site. For ATP, it depends on which location you choose that will determine if you ever have to pay for parking. But from my research, most ATP locations, you don't have to pay for parking. Now, for Blue Line, this can total be right around $330 over the entire program. How I come up with this is it'll cost you around $6 per day to park there. And let's say you have to be there three days a week for five and a half months. Your total will come out to $330. Another thing to consider is when Blue Line moves at the end of 2020. You will not have to pay for parking at Johnson County Regional. So, how do these schools total up? Well, Blue Line comes out to $96,088, and ATP comes out to $110,785. That makes a difference of around $14,697. But if you add in potentially getting an iPad with four flight and Jefferson charts, you'd be looking at a difference of $13,797 between both schools. Now, a big thing here is that this will fluctuate drastically from person to person. As an example, the difference I experienced between these schools is I would be saving around $23,000 by going to Blue Line. So make sure you're adding up your own numbers that are specific to you to get a more accurate number. All right, we also need to go over other considerations such as class reservation fees, loan comparisons, etc. Let's start with the class reservation fee, which is not covered by the loan for either school. This is the fee you pay to go ahead and lock in your class date. For Blue Line, it's $2,000, and ATP, it's $995. Everything else from here on this subject is about the loans and what you can expect from them. So what is the average interest rate on these loans for each school? Now, I'm sure it can go without saying, but this is completely dependent on your own financial and credit situation. But on average, Blue Line students are getting 7 to 8% and ATP is getting around 8 to 10%. Now as a co-signer required for either school. For ATP, almost all the students I talked with, no matter how good their credit score was or their financial history, they required a co-signer. There were a rare few that I talked with that didn't need a cosigner though. As for Blue Line, I know of students who found Blue Line appealing just on this one aspect alone because they didn't need a cosigner through Meritize. That being said, I would assume there are some scenarios where a cosigner would be required, but I haven't talked with any students yet for Blue Line that required one. Now, does the loan cover your personal expenses? For Blue Line, their lenders will not cover anything outside of the program cost of $75,000. But for Sally Mae at ATP, they will cover some of your personal expenses, such as student housing, training materials, living stipends, and a reserve. As for loan terms, Meritize through Blue Line is 10 years and Sally Mae at ATP is 15 years. This can have an impact on your monthly payments after your deferment period, but this is what I was talking about earlier that it kind of doesn't matter because you can refinance your loan in the future to not only a lower interest rate, but to a 15 year term. I'll explain this more later. Now, as we talked earlier in the cost breakdown, Blue Line's lender has an origination fee of 3% of their loan total, but when I applied, I was about half of that at 1.5%. Just in case though, if it is 3% for you and you finance the whole program, the total of the 
loan and the loan origination fee would be $77,250. ATP's lender doesn't have a loan origination fee. So what do these interest only deferment options look like for each school? If you're not familiar with this, this is where the lender will allow you to not have to make any payments or you can make really low payments on your loan while you're in school. They do this because they understand you're not making any income, so they're kind of helping you out. But the problem is, is your loan amount is accruing interest during this period. So please be aware of that because that can rack up pretty huge. Now, both schools provide deferment options for during and after school. During school, you have the option of not paying anything with both schools. After school is where the schools differ. And because this changes so frequently, I'm not gonna go into detail, but currently what you see listed in this area is what options were available as of February, 2020. Now, I want you to take a look at this section here, as it'll give you a general idea of what you'd be looking at in your future when it comes to your loan's finances. As stated before, some of the loan numbers don't matter because if you look at the refinance section, you can see that the numbers drastically change once you refinance. Most students I have talked with refinance during their instructor phase, and I even talked to the student who was able to refinance a month after graduating school. I do have refinancing listed at 5%, but most students I talked with that refinance were getting down to three or 4%. Also, most of the students are paying three to $400 a month instead of what I have listed here. But once again, I want to give you worst case scenario. So that brings me to my conclusion. Who did I choose? I chose Blue Line, of course. It not only logically made sense to me, but even my gut was telling me to choose Blue Line. I was excited about Blue Line. From really just enjoying the staff and the instructors to the amazing aircraft, to the potential of having a higher quality of life of being an instructor at Blue Line. And of course, cost being a huge factor and to compare my own personal expenses here, I'm actually saving $23,000 and I'm graduating approximately four to five months sooner than I would if I went to ATP. Now I've had people ask if Blue Line was such a clear winner, why was I debating it for so long? And you might actually be in the same position. Well, because ATP has been around for so long, they supposedly pioneered this whole concept of a fast track program in the aviation industry. So because of that, there is this kind of comfort when it comes to ATP. The thing is that when you're spending this much money, you really don't wanna be choosing a flight school based off of your surface level impression of that school. I was able to get away from the romanticized idea of ATP and Blue Line, especially their good marketing. And ATP goes nuts on their marketing, but it allowed me to truly compare the schools and where they actually stand. I really want to be clear here. ATP is a good flight school. They've been around 30 plus years. They've kind of figured this out. But in the end, I just generally think that Blue Line's a better school. Top dogs in the industry are not always the best choice. You got to consider that sometimes the underdogs are going to be more driven to provide more quality for you. In this instance, I think Blue Line's doing that. Either way, I can't express enough how important it is to visit the flight schools that you're interested in. I was dead set on going to ATP. And I almost canceled my trip to Blue Line because of that comfort that I felt with ATP. But after visiting Blue Line, it opened my eyes and lo and behold, I am now going to Blue Line. All right, let me wrap up here with a word of advice that comes from a bunch of pilots that I talked with that were in the industry and that also retired in the industry. And it was, oddly enough, it was, it was the same thing that came from almost all the pilots. Their message was that although flight schools are a stepping stone, they all wish they could have taken the time to actually truly enjoy flight school while they were going through it. They said that they just got so stuck in, in the systemic process of just studying and trying to get your rating that they missed out on the foundation of their pilot career. So first, logically choose a flight school that will suit your needs. But also listen to your gut and make sure that you're gonna really enjoy your time at the flight school that you choose. All right, shameless plug time. If you're interested in seeing my experience as I go through Blue Line Aviation, and I start on February 17th of 2020, there'll be two different ways you can watch. First, I have a live show that's on Instagram every Sunday and it's called Fluff or Nutter Live. Don't judge the title, okay? Fluff and Nutters are amazing. On that show, it's not necessarily aviation related, but I will definitely be talking about my experience, about what I went through during that prior week at Blue Line. You'll also have the opportunity to be able to ask me questions while I'm on there as well, which there already are people that are on there asking me questions about flight school stuff. So the second way to watch is I'm going to have these more high production edited videos like this that are going to have like in-flight footage. You're going to hear ATC audio, the whole deal. And in these videos, I'm going to go into detail about what I went through during that week at Blue Line. And they'll be labeled week one, week two, week three, the whole deal. Those videos most likely won't get posted until after I graduate because I probably won't have the time to edit those videos while I'm in flight school, but I definitely intend to grab a bunch of footage. Totally can't wait to go through all of that footage. If you haven't already seen them, make sure to check out my uh, my visit videos where I visit Blue Line uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I also visit ATP in Tampa, Florida. I don't know why I'm pointing. That was actually the wrong directions. ATP is that way, Blue Line is that way. 
<laughs> if you'd like to keep an eye out for where my videos post, I always post on YouTube and Facebook. So links will be in the description to those channels, and so make sure you subscribe. And on YouTube, make sure you hit the little notification bell. I hate even having to say that. If you have any questions, I answer all comments in my videos. But you're also more than welcome to reach out to me at, at AndyPateVlogs, which is my Instagram handle, and I'm really active on Instagram. All right. Whew. That was insane how long this video is. Like, what? All right, I hope that was informative enough for you. I love your face. Okay, bye.